Starter decks. We gotta pick all these up now. Oh boy. Hey, where does up everybody? So yeah, you're gonna wanna buy starter decks. First off, foremost, if you're a new player, a veteran player, if you're buying any product from the store, you're generally gonna wanna buy those starter decks if you're trying to play the game for a lot of reasons, actually. So let's just start. Uh, every deck has two of the divine runes for their element, which if you want the divine runes, they are only in the full art slot in a booster box and booster packs, which is a one in 36 for a full art. Multiply that by 13 full arts, your chances of getting those gods in boxes and blisters is minuscule. So you're generally not going to get the gods you need or the gods or any god that you want really. It's going to be very difficult to get those in the booster boxes. So get the starter deck of the element that you need so you at least have two of that element's god. Very important for like every deck that wants a nexus. They get spirits on board which is relevant for banking spirits so you can use them for other card abilities etc. You want to make sure that you get the starter deck in the element you want to play first and foremost. Then, if you want to be a little bit more on the competitive side, you definitely need to get the Fire and the Earth starter deck because they both come with counter runes that are only exclusively in those starter decks for set one, which are Gorgon's Gaze and Poison Tipped Arrow. Both extremely meta staples seen in almost every deck. Gorgon's Gaze is pretty much in every deck unless you're playing something like a Sonicore deck where you can't really use counter runes as much. But Gorgon's Gaze is in every deck. You get two in the Firestar deck. Only way to get Gorgon's Gaze, I really recommend you buying a Firestar deck if you're trying to be competitive at all. Otherwise, you're going to have a tough time hunting down those Gorgon's Gazes because, again, they're only in that Firestar deck. Poison to Arrow you can live without in the competitive environment, but it will limit some of your counter play and counter removal that you have access to. And the rest of the Earth deck isn't super stunning, so Poison to Arrow is the only real priority there. Then you can look at the Thunder starter deck, again for the Divine Rune you get two Zeus's, very important. You also get Toxian, which is relevant in Thunder Nexus. So getting those Toxian are good if you're trying to play the meta Thunder, basically all the Thunder meta decks run Toxian. Well, Tempest doesn't always run Toxian, so Toxian's only in there. You're going to want to get that in your starter deck. Wind, you get Laurels. Laurels you can live without, but it is a pretty heavy sideboard staple to use against something like Thunder Nexus, uh, mid-range deck, stuff that likes to just throw a lot of spirits onto board. And then Water, you can live without Water. Unless you really want to play Majesty or get Foil Majesty, uh, the exclusive in there is Oystress, which is currently not seeing much meta play. So Water is the deck that you can pass on the most, unless you're trying to do Trident Lock decks, which you want Poseidon's for, which again, we mentioned Divine Runes. That right there, that's what you want to get straight up. If you're a competitive player, new player, starter decks are the way to go for basically all your staples and cards you need, especially those Divine Runes. Unless you want to fork over $80 to $150 for each Divine Rune. Or really try and find someone who's selling starter deck with Divine Rune still in them. Because those are going to be the cards that people want the most out of those decks. Besides Gorgons and Poison Tip Arrow. Then if you're going to buy loose packs or a box. Honestly the Blister Packs might be a slightly better value. We've seen some people opening the Blister Packs. And have instead of the 1 in 36 odds for Full Arts and Hollow Spirits. 1 in 8 odds, so there might be a slight issue with the collation of the blister packs. Possibly. But the rate on the blister packs seems to be a bit better, somewhat anecdotally, I haven't really crunched numbers on this, than the booster box. So if you're trying to get a bunch of rare cards and full arts and hollow spirits, get blister packs. If you're trying to just complete a collection or get some like rares and stuff so you can actually make some of your decks, Get a box so if you're trying to like just get into the game first and foremost start a deck of the element you want to play and a booster box should get you there and then look through the secondary market for other cards a lot of the cards in the secondary market are pretty cheap so be on the lookout for that in the buy sell trade server if you're looking for something a starter deck and then going in to buy some cards off some people in the buy sell trade server might be even cheaper than just trying to hunt the cards but i do think push packs have a better rate than the booster boxes the caveat being the booster boxes are pretty much a guaranteed one full art, one hollow, and uh, ten or one full art, one hollow spirit, and ten hollow uh, rares. So your mileage may vary. I'm gonna probably pick up some blisters instead of boosters on my end personally. Then when you're looking at all the other stuff, sleeves, play mats, etc., buy what you want. I mean they'll be there. I doubt those things will sell out. I 
think the gameplay pieces like the boost boxes and the packs will sell out first because people want to play the game. And the starter decks may sell up pretty quick, especially the fire and earth decks. Anyone trying to play competitive are going to pick those up real fast. So I wouldn't wait on the cards and products. If you can only spend money on a little bit of things, you know, that's fine. Get, get yourself a starter deck. Get yourself some packs. I would get that first. You can worry about mats and sleeves in the future, honestly. Your best bet. Again, if you want to play Elestrals for as cheap as possible, get a starter deck and then go straight to the secondary market for the rest of your pieces. That's honestly probably the best play. And then lastly, I want to touch on the Founders Packs and the Artist Collection Packs. If you're playing decks with those cards in them, look at what's in each one. Pick them up. Uh, you'd want to pick up. I mean, it's $15, I believe, for the Artist Collection, $25 for the Founders Pack. Those seem reasonable prices, especially since the Founders Pack was uh, exclusively one per person. Uh, at $25, it's kind of expensive, but you do get a lot of exclusive cards that may or may not hold some value in the future. Even if you can sell every card in the Founders Pack for a dollar piece in the future, you break even. So the Founders Pack's decent value, Arts Collection, always decent value. Um, be aware though, the Arts Collection and the Founders Pack, because there are so many foil cards stacked together in one pack, they're probably going to come a little bit Pringled. That I noticed with a lot of Founders and uh, a lot of the... Um, out of all the artist collections I opened, all the artist collections except for one were pretty bent, but they all kind of unbent over time with the book on them. So hey, pros cons. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about those founders packs unless you specifically want to play cards in those decks, or maybe you're trying to get some long term value out of them. They're gonna take a while to sell if you try to pick them up, I would think. But hey, they're cool, and they're not crazy expensive. But if you're trying to play the game again, starter decks, booster box. And if you guys are trying to play some Lustrals, I will try to do some streams. I know A-Drive is doing streams currently uh, to teach people midday a lot of days. I'm going to try to get into the streaming game a little bit on Twitch. So hey, link below for that. Follow me there and I'll probably try to get uh, a stream in maybe every Friday if I can, give or take. And I'll see you guys in the next video with uh, some excitement. I don't know. Maybe some excitement. I don't know what my next video is yet. So see you in the next one. Have a good one and buy some cards. Or don't. It's up to you. Buy within your means. Have a good night.